Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with predictions video. Double predictions, but not just NXT TakeOver knowledge, but also for Media 34. It is official. WrestleMania weekend is upon us, people. Despite the hype for Mania not being the best, the matches on paper for Mania and NXT TakeOver are pretty good. You know, real good cards. See which one shines upon the rest. Or where Ring of Honor's event outshine them all. Which I am not making a prediction video for Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor. I am going to watch it though. But I'm not watching it live. I'm watching it after NXT TakeOver on Saturday. So, uh, got my Mania shirt on in honor of the Star Mania weekend. Mania 23. One of the two Manias I went to. Went to Mania 18 in Toronto with The Rock and Hogan. They went to Mania 23. That was in my home state of Michigan. Ford Field. Can't believe it's been 11 years since Mania 23. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So happy Mania. Happy what's that day? And happy Mania weekend. You know, it's going to be a crazy weekend. Especially those like me who watch Ring of Honor as well. You know, I watch Ring of Honor, Super Call of Honor. They got my regular one hour shows of it in Ring of Honor. I watch Japan, I watch on Access. So I got a lot of that. And a Hall of Fame tomorrow. And this is like my first video on a slew of videos coming out in the next couple days for Mini Weekend. Got this prediction video. The Hall of Fame review tomorrow. Then an XT Takeover review. My Mini review. And of course my Wall review. So the next five days, a lot of videos coming in. So let's do no more dilly dally. And make some predictions for NXT Takeover Nolans. This is the third NXT Takeover to be the night before, well, the weekend of WrestleMania. Because Takeover Dallas was the, I think it was the Friday. Friday before Mania. And uh, then it went to Saturday last year. But now, here we are. Nolan's takeover. Let's start with the match I predict will be the first match of the night. It will be a triple threat match for the NXT Tag Team title stemming from the Undisputed Era in a theory in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Final on the NXT that aired yesterday on the network. Um, Dusty Tag Team Classic returned after a year off. Of course, the finals for the 2016 one took place at NXT TakeOver, I think it was Toronto. I think that was the TakeOver that, uh, that the finals were doing for 2016. Yeah, it was like, um, but they didn't have uh, Dusty last year, but now they did. And the final was down to the Elvis of Pain, the reigning champions of the Dusty Classic, and the Made up team of uh, Pete Dunn and Roderick Strong. Now, the winners were the face off against the Undisputed Era for the tag team titles at TakeOver. Bobby Fish got hurt, so Adam Cole has to pull double duty to get to a second match in a minute. They interfered in that final that aired on NXT television yesterday. Love Bucks, right? And they thought, hey, get them both the cute. We have no opponents, especially with Adam in a ladder match. And Bobby Fish getting hurt. But the plan was backfired by, uh, by the Commissioner Weagle, saying that it would be a triple threat for the titles and the final of the Dusty Classic. So the winner of the Dusty Classic and the tag belts will be determined in this matchup. Uh, it's hard to predict this one, but uh, I am. I'm actually going to change my prediction. Um. I'm actually, you know what? I'm gonna leave it like this, uh, because it's just a weird team. I predict um uh, that Strong and Dunn will be champions in this case. You know, an unlikely team teaming up together and become champions. Especially with AOP, I think they should go up the main roster after Mania. As another one of my predictions, which NXT? I'll make that the end of this prediction of NXT. Which NXT stars do I think should debut after Mania? A little bit in there. So, that's my prediction for the tag team title match. Strong and done. New champions. Uh, then, 
for the NXT Women's Championship. It's a rematch from their takeover match in Philly. It's the champion, Emma Moon, taking on, again, Shayna Baszler. Now, the match in Philly was decent. It was kind of a beatdown match, because Shayna's still kind of green when it comes to wrestling. You know, she brings her MMA style. She brought it during that match against Amber, you know, talking to the arm a lot. And almost got Amber to tap out, but she counted, I think she counted to a pin. That was a cool little ending there. But Shayna kept attacking Amber after the match and kept attacking her verbally and physically during the last few weeks of NXT television. Uh, kind of insane and involved, but no matter what, my prediction is that I love Amber. I've been applauding her for so long. I've been wanting to be champion. I'm happy for her. But I believe Shayna Baszler will defeat Amber Moon and become the new NXT Women's Champion. So Amber can go to main roster too. And so we can get a Shayna Kyrie Sane feud. You know, for the NXT Championship. You know, because Shayna took Kyrie out last fall. And I think now with her as champion, we can get a proper feud with her and Kyrie. You know, a renewal of the finals of the Mae Young Classic, which uh, Kyrie, Kyrie won. So that's my prediction there. Um, then the match. I'm def one of the matches, man. Like any match, I'm looking forward to in the car, but I'm definitely looking forward to this one. The unsanctioned match between two former tag team partners had to wait a whole year to get the payoff to a swerve, a turn, doing NXT Takeover Chicago. But now the payoff is finally here. The best things happen for those who wait. It's going to be Johnny Gargano against the Psycho Killer, Tommaso Ciampa. Who didn't love DIY? The underdog tag team. Well, in the NXT universe throughout most of 2015 and all of 2016, becoming the NXT Tag Team Champions by defeating Revival in an awesome 2 out of 3 false match at NXT TakeOver Toronto. After losing the titles to the Authors of Pain in January and failing in a rematch, Triple Threat match, and he can take over Orlando. They had one last shot, and that was it. Take over Chicago in a lot of matches against AOP, which was the probably the best match of the night of that same takeover. It was exciting, it was intense, but of course, the aftermath of the match left us all in tears. As Gargano got taken out by his own partner, Chapa, taken out against the street. But as I said earlier, the payoff, we had to wait over a year for the payoff to this. Because Ciampa, unfortunately, bad timing, hurt his knee right before takeover, thus delaying any payoff with him and Gargano. But the best happens for those who wait. He returned and NXT takeover Philly, attacking Gargano for an amazing match against Sian Amos for the NXT Championship. I thought he, I knew he would, someone would turn at takeover in January, but I thought he would be in the match. But he waited until after the match to attack Gargano. He waited until the rematch. NXT television where Johnny's NXT career was on the line to screw him during the match. And he's probably one of the most hated guys, not just in WWE, but in NXT as well. Especially because every time he would enter in Atlanta or when they came back to full sale, the bruise, which is deafening, and he could not get a word out. If his life depended on it, because every time we reached out to the mic, he got like Roman after Mania 33 heat. You know, get get closer to his mouth. Boo! And the payoff happened when, uh, kind of a mini payoff when he went to first sale trying to speak. And then Gargano had to buy a sign and attack Jumper. And even went to his house because he wants a match. And he's technically not contact with NXT. So now it's unsanctioned. And if Johnny wins, he will get reinstated to NXT. I don't know what to think about this one. Because I'm predicting for now Gargano to get the perfect payoff against Jumpa. But both guys will be main roster soon. So, and that's why I think the probably that may want Jumper to win. So Gargano can stay away from NXT and go to main roster. And hopefully not get underutilized like Ty Dillinger is right now. But I am going to change. I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. Prediction, John Gargano will be Chopper on St. will be one of the most violent matches of the night. Next to this one, a ladder match for a brand new mid-card title. Finally! 
They are finally bring up a second singles title in NXT. They needed it for so long. Because if you're not fighting for the NXT title, what the hell are you going to do? Fight for the tag titles? So I'm going to get a secondary title. Uh, the title looks good. Uh, there's a lot of mixed reviews for it. It looks kind of old schoolish. You know, and people are like, it looks shittier than the UK title. U the UK title looks awesome. Yes, I agree with some. It ain't as good as the UK title. UK title is amazing. Design. Probably one of the best designs on any title recently is the UK title. But US title, the North American title is not bad. So we have four NXT veterans in this match. You have it's North American, yet we have an Irishman. Which is Dillian Dane from Sanity. Then you're going to have Lon Sullivan, one of my faves, not just because he's a prince character, but because he's a great athlete, too. Of course, referring to the Velveteen Dream. We're coming from a shitty takeover match in Philly. It wasn't his fault. He had cash his own on the night of chemistry. And, as I mentioned earlier, only double duty. Not only, that's why I think the tag title match will be first. So Adam Cole can fight first, and then rest up to be in a Sunday match. And of course, the two uh, last entrants making their NXT in-ring debuts. We have EC3 returning to NXT. I didn't know he was in NXT. All I knew of him was his TNA days. There was EC3 in TNA. And he's improved a lot as well, so I didn't like him at first. You know, as a wrestler, especially his bill, with him beating up jobbers and being undefeated for like, what, two years, it felt like. And he finally got pinned by Hardy and this undefeated streak. So, uh, before I became broke and before I stopped watching TNA. But I met EC3 and an indie show. Nice guy. He wrestled that indie show and looked a lot better than he did when I saw him in TNA. Care to see him and. Also makes his debut, Ricochet from New Japan and Prince Puma in Lucha Underground. I saw a little bit of Lucha Underground with him in it. And of course, I saw that match with him and Will Ospreay in the Bastard Super Juniors final, I think, two years ago, which was amazing. Well, semifinals, it was amazing. Amazing match. A lot of people criticize that match for being too flippy floppy, too gymnastic y. Of course, Vader was a big critic of that, but it's a new style now. But I really enjoyed it. So my prediction of who I think would be the first champion, I have two picks. Adam Cole or Ricochet. If the Undisputed Era retain the tag titles, Ricochet will win. But if the Undisputed Era loses the tag titles, Adam Cole will win. So that's like my little prediction there. Then the main event. Well, we, might, well, we don't know what the main event match yet, but it might be the main match. It will be for the NXT Championship. It will be Andrade Cien Almas, who needs to give his mic always to his beautiful and better mic skilled manager, Selena Vega. That's what she's there for, dude. Defending his title against Alistair Black. It's been over a year since Alistair Black debuted at NXT TakeOver Orlando and dazzled the NXT Universe with a striking style and, of course, his devastating Black Mask finisher. When it comes to Andrade, who would have thought he would be at this level after he debuted in NXT two years ago as a babyface removing his lucha mask and wearing suspenders in the top hat? His babyface gimmick wasn't working, especially with feuding with guys like Aries and Bobby Roode. So that did not help him at all. But then he turned heel by the end of the year and started to flex his muscle around. But it wasn't until the arrival of Selena Vega last summer that his luck really turned around. She became the predictor factor into the rise of Andrade, beating Jerry Gargano at TakeOver Brooklyn 3. Last year, the opening match, a really good match. That was just a precursor for the match in Philly. That was, of course, after Andrade shocked the world by beating Drew McIntyre for the title at NXT TakeOver Houston. Nobody saw that coming. I did not think Andrade had a chance to beat Drew McIntyre. But he did in a good match. But his match against Johnny Gargano, main event of TakeOver's first TakeOver main event, and first as champion, was an amazing match. An awesome match. And I think you put on a good one with uh, Alistair. 
But I predict the Black Mask will be executed. And despite Selena Vega might be getting involved, I still predict that we will have a new NXT champion in Alistair Black. It's time for him to win it. And if Andrade beats him, I will be stunned. I will be stunned. So, there's that. So, last prediction for NXT is, I guess, I'm predicting which NXT superstars do I think will make their main roster debut after Mania. I predict that uh, Emma Moon will debut. Uh, Others of Pain debut. But I think uh, Emma Moon should be on SmackDown. Wall's already too packed. Um, I think Others of Pain should be on Wall. Um, Drew McIntyre on SmackDown. Uh, I think he'll debut. He's been out for a while. But I think he'll debut after Mania. As a prediction. If Gargano loses to Ciampa, he'll be on SmackDown. And, uh, if we haven't seen those girls in a while, I think if they want to, put the iconic duo of Peyton Royce and Billy Kay on SmackDown. Oh no, I'll, I'll be walk. A little be walk. And have a little thing with Bliss. We'll see. So I'm going to predict like, which NXT superstars I think will make roster. But, let's talk about the main roster. Let's talk about WrestleMania. Oh, oh, WrestleMania. I didn't need a musical cue. I decided to do it for myself. I got to cut the match and make sure I'm right. Can make sure I'm right before I do anything because I don't want to miss a match. Yeah, I think I'm right. So, let's start with the pre show matches for now. This is the matches for now. If there's any last minute changes, we'll see. Can you believe they're going to do both Battle Royals on the pre show? That's stupid. They should have at least one on the main show. And I think it should be. The women's battle royals should be in the main show. But nonetheless, I'll start with that. Uh, of course, the renamed women's battle royal just was supposed to be called Mula's Battle Royal until there was a big backlash against the name because of the stated history of Mula outside the ring. And it took the fans pointing it out to the sponsors of WrestleMania, Snickers, to make Derry relent. But then make a trophy, and I didn't really think of it on Monday when it was revealed. It looked like a woman's productive, reproductive organ. Anyway, the announced competitors thus far from the wall side will be Bailey, Sasha Banks, Absolutions, Manny Wilson, Sonya Deville, and Mickey James. From SmackDown, we miss Money in the Bank, Carmella. We'll get a little prediction about her in a minute. Lana, Ruby Riot, Sarah Logan, and Liv Morgan from the Wyatt Squad, Natalia, and Becky Lynch, and Naomi. Now, I'm predicting we're going to get some NXT women. Maybe Kyrie Sane again. Maybe Emma Moon. Maybe Nikki Cross. I think she can go. If Nikki Cross goes main roster after Mania, SmackDown. But we'll see who actually debuts or not after Mania. But my prediction for the uh, Battle Royal will be Sasha Banks and Bailey will probably be the last two. Or one of them will eliminate each other. But it's kind of a weird pick, but I'm picking Bailey to win the Women's Battle Royal. It'd be great for her to get some momentum back into week nine of feud against Sasha Banks as a little bit of bragging rights. It, it'll either come down to Bailey and Sasha, or one of them's going to eliminate the other. And then one may pull the other if they don't win. But my prediction is Bailey. This one was tougher to predict. The Unvaded Giant. Battle Royal. This is a tough one. Because of the participants. I was like, who deserves it more? Uh, the announced competitors for now. From the wall side, we got the Revival. Woken, Matt Hardy. Gold Dust, Keith Slayer, and Rhino. And on the SmackDown side, we have the last two winners. Baron Corbin and Mojo Wally. Alongside Tiny Dillinger. Fondango, Tyler Breeze, Fashion Popo. Dolph Ziggler, Zack Ryder, and yes, Primo Cologne. Look, one of the colognes is back. We saw him on SmackDown on Tuesday. 
This is the, like I said, this was the top one to pick. The, the pick a winner. Um, I, I'm going on a limb on this one. <laughs> I'm going with Dolph Ziggler. Anyway, there's only a giant battle royal. <laughs> but guys, you know, he ran away for a few months and didn't really capitalize on the U.S. title thing. Just came from like, hey, I took the U.S. title and I'm only gone for like a month and come back to the one with no hoopla. So hopefully make up for it by having him in the Wumble. I was going to pick Rusev. That was my original pick for the under giant battle royal was Rusev until he got thrusted into the U.S. title picture. And I'm happy he did. So that was my predictions for those. Then the match I was kind of making jokes about, about it being on the pre-show, and I'm unhappy it's not on the pre-show. It's the Cruiserweight title match. They want to make the Cruiserweights relevant again. You know, True Fight Live is amazing now. It's been better ever since Trip Rate started wanting it backstage. We have a new general manager. It's Rockstar Spud, not Drake Maverick. Get it right. You know, be a perfect opportunity to expose the Cruiserweight division by having it on the main show. Not the freaking pre-show like last year, but the mistake was made again. There's even a petition out. Because remember last year, the SmackDown Women's title match was on the pre-show. But then there was a petition signed to make the women's match on the main show. Well, it was, but unfortunately got five minutes. And the IC title match was thrusted into the pre-show. There is a petition out right now for the Cruiserweight title match to be on the main show. Because this match has the potential to steal the show. It does not need to be on the freaking pre-show. The finals of the Cruiser title tournament, it will be Mustafa Ali against Cedric Alexander. Now, this is another tough one for me to pick because I like both guys. And Cedric's got a big story with, you know, he's, he was like the number one contender for the Cruiserweight title and Enzo was still champion. And he got screwed a couple times on it. Enzo got sick during the original schedule title match. And then when the match actually happened, it ended up being a screwy ending. They were supposed to have a rematch at the Royal Rumble, but that match got called off, and Enzo Moore got fired, thrusting this title match tournament. And there were a match the week before Drake Maverick was GM. These two put on an awesome match at 205 Live, which I wish it was going to be on the main show. And I was going to predict Cedric to win. But we still at least getting some airtime. I've been a fan of his. The 205 Live guy is better. Long way to go, but at least they're making big progress in the last four months. But still not enough progress to not put him on the main show. <clears throat> uh, Mustafa Ali. That's my prediction to win the Cruiserweight title. So uh, now on to the main show. The matches that are on the main show for now. I'll start with the two non-title matches and how ironic that we have two non-title tag matches and they're both involving a McMahon in each one. First on the SmackDown side, we got Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan. Yes, yes, he's cleared. The tank on Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. We've known the feud for the last few months with the Shane Vendetta against KO and Sami. You know, what happened at SummerSlam last year? They boiled over and held in a cell. We ended up saving, saving Kevin Owens from getting put through a table by Shane, who jumped off the roof of the cell. I was at that pay per view held in a cell. And then, you know, what happened at Survivor Series and other pay per views and Fastlane and Shane's going over Sammy and KO for the WWE title, especially after Kevin Owens super kicked Shane, who was at ringside. So, this is what many people predicted was going to happen, but. We didn't think Daniel Bryan would get cleared in time, and he did. Uh, then he got cleared before the Royal Rumble. Because a lot of people predicted he was going to uh, be in the Royal Rumble. But he wasn't. And I'm happy he wasn't in the Rumble at the wall because it would have ruined Shinsuke's moment because people would have booed Daniel Bryan being eliminated more than two Shinsuke. Of course, if uh, Sami Zayn and KO win, they're back on SmackDown. Um, I love d but I got to go with. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn will win this one because Shane's mania history has been sketchy. Uh, I think he's been in. I need to double check this. And I think I'm going to be right. Shane has been either in a tag match or a singles match. I think at five manias. 15, 17 against his dad. He was at 32. 
33 now 34. This is his fifth Mania match. As it stands, Shane is 2-2. Two two. Won at 15 and 17. Lost the last two years. Putting young guys over. Or putting Taker over. So I predict he'll do the same. Let the young guys go over and stay on SmackDown and stay hired. So, I love you, Daniel, but I say KO and Sh Sh uh, Zayn win. And maybe Shane turns on d -Bi, or d -Bi turns on Shane. We'll see what happens there. If there is a swerve with those two. Then, of course, Shane's sister is in a big match. A mixed tag match with Stephanie and Triple H against Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle. Now, if I'm not mistaken, and I was going to double check this, this is, surprisingly, might be the first time that Stephanie has ever competed in a real match at WrestleMania. Now, she did wrestle at 33. Of course, she got physical at 31. She was a trip rate to 32. 30. She was, like I said, yeah. I think, like I said, she's never wrestled a real match in Mania before. So it's kind of interesting. If I'm not correct, uh, correct me in the comment section. I know you will if I'm wrong. But I think I'm right. Stephanie's never competed at Mania in any match. And it's a big one against Rousey. And Angle making his first Mania match since... Must be at 22. 12 years ago in Chicago. So that's a big thing. You know, first angle match of Mania. The build's been okay to this since Rousey's debut at the Royal Rumble. Signed that contract and Kurt Angle kind of stirring the pot, causing this match to happen. And I'm predicting that one of the Rousey and Kurt Angle will win. Hopefully, Trip Rates and Stephanie's Eagles will step aside and give Rousey a Mania win. Unlike Triple H's Eagle, who did not let Sting win his first Mania match at Mania 31, his only Mania match. So hopefully, Triple H loses, but looking back at the last couple years, the especially the last five years, after Mania 29, all even-numbered Manias, he's lost. Odd number manias, he's won. Must be at 29, he won. Must be at 30, he lost. Man of 31, he won. Man of 32, he lost. Actually, he lost last year, too. So, it makes that whole logic. So, I predict he will lose to Angle and Rousey. So, now on to our title matches. I'll go with the SmackDown side first. For the U.S. title, it will now be a fatal four-way as the champ, Randy Orton, the fans against Bobby Roode, Jinder Mahal, and recently added, and I'm happy he got added, Rusev. Rusev Day is over as hell, yet they were probably going to put Rusev, sadly, in the other the giant battle royal. But last week, he got instead into the U.S. title match. A lot of people predicting about why he's in. Either it's because A, his butch sales are through the roof, or it recently came out that Rusev asked for his release recently. So this is like a coming up period. Make up, hey, you get a time to match a mania now. And not get fired. And that's why I'm predicting Rusev will become the new US champion. He's never won a mania match yet. He lost the US championship to John Cena at Mania 31. And yes, we cool to see Bobby Wood win his first Mania match. But Rusev needs this more than Bobby Wood. Wood needs to be fucking heel. He's not good as a baby face. I'm sorry. He's okay as a baby face. But he needs to be that heel from NXT again. That's why he hasn't done well in main while since by a okay US title reign. Do not want Jinder to win. My dad probably wants Jinder to win. He's probably one of only three people who want Jinder to be the US champion this Sunday. And bow to the modern day Maharaja. But that's my prediction. Rusev wins. Then, for the SmackDown Tag Team titles, it will be a triple threat match between the champs, the Usos, defending against the New Day, and the Bludgeon Brothers. It's awesome. The Usos is going to match on the main card. Yay! Finally, after being in the company for so long, they're finally on the main card. 
And New Day wrestles for the first time in Mania since Mania 32. They hosted last year and didn't wrestle. And plus, they were tag champs, but the titles were not on the line. Loser of the New Day, I talked about that feud a long time. They've been awesome matches. But the Bludgeon Brothers, ever since the Wee Branding, was the best thing in my mind that ever happened to Hopper and Warren. They've been dominant, being booked strong, especially the build of this match, stemming especially from Fastlane, where the Bludgeon Brothers interrupted the anti town match against the Usos and New Day and destroyed them with hammers and everything. And that's why I'm predicting if they don't fuck it up, the Bludgeon Brothers will become your new champions. Up smack them and book strong, and they better not mess this up. They better not make them look so strong, yet let them lose at Mania. So, uh, there you go. Now, on to the SmackDown Women's Title Match. On paper, the match looks great. Two of the strongest women in a while. And we've had that, we've had great women's matches. Uh, in recent memory, but they've mostly been multi-women matches at Mania, especially Mania 32. We haven't had that one significant singles women's title match yet at Mania. And this could be it. Charlotte against Asuka. Title against Streak. The build could be a lot better, but hey, what can you do when Asuka's on Raw and Charlotte's on SmackDown? So, if Asuka wins, does that mean she's technically a SmackDown woman now? But, uh, now, this should be a fun one. Even with the lack of build, the match will make up for it. And I am predicting Asuka will win the SmackDown Women's title. Now, when it comes to cashing in, uh, I'll make that prediction a little bit later. I got some non-match predictions after this. So. Then, the SmackDown main event, which should be the overall main event, not Lesnar Woman, hashtag not my main event, for the WWE title, it's Shinsuke Nakamura, the winner of the Royal Rumble, against AJ Styles. So, the dream match, a Wii match for Wrestle Kingdom and the Tokyo Dome. Because I watched, I thought I watched the match. Because I was like really into New Japan around 2014, 50, well 2015, I started watching New Japan, but they were playing stuff in 2014. And I think that's when they fought for the title. I didn't even see that match, but I probably think it was amazing, and people have been dreaming about this match being in WWE ever since these two came to WWE two years ago. And now here we are. The build for this one's been pretty good, especially on Tuesday, well, in the last two weeks. Both the, uh, teasing their finishers on each other, and then both patting the other on the head. Good little mind games. You don't need to have blood hatred. You have two awesome competitors wrestle each other. And despite the so-called AJ injury, he will be wrestling this Sunday against Shinsuke Nakamura unless something really freaking happens before Sunday, which I hope doesn't happen. And I predict Shinsuke Nakamura will become the new WWE Champion. Love AJ. His second reign as WWE Champion's not been the most eventful. You know, he had to be lumped into that hole that Cammy, he was fourth to call him Cammy, KO and Sammy feared. That boiled over the fast lane, the six pack challenge. So the second time it's been unremarkable, but this will make up for it. We put on an awesome showing against Shinsuke Nakamura. Now on to our wall title matches. First up for the Intercontinental Championship, we got a lot of multi mans. For the IC title triple threat, it will be the newly crowned daddy, the Miz, defending against both Seth Freaking Wallens. And Finn Balor. This should be one of the show stealers. Should be a ladder match. But hey, since we got a ladder match at NXT TakeOver, makes up for it. <laughs> you know, all three work, I've been applauding all three guys for a long time. And especially Miz, he's had a hell of a year. Or two, the, the, like, the last two years for Miz have been amazing. Great matches, great promos. You know, making non believers truly believe in Miz now. You know what I mean? Now he's got a new baby girl, one more sky. Things are looking good for him. But his world's about to come crashing down because I predict he will lose his IC championship. I think I'm predicting all new champions. <laughs> I think I'm predicting all new champions. I think, I don't know, I, I have nobody retaining their titles. But I don't think that's ever happened. Like when 
all champions change hands in one night. Like, there's only like, maybe one or two that could stay hands. But I think the IC title will change hands, and I think Finn Balor will win it. Because not only is the woman's plan that Seth Rollins is going to feud with Woman, which is, well, I think everyone knows who's predicting the Universal Title match. It's kind of predictable. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, uh, Finn deserves it more. He needs a uh, Bitcoin title. He's been back for over a year since his untimely injury after he beat Seth Rollins for the Universal title at SummerSlam. He's been kind of lost in the shuffle a bit, not been used properly, and not being fussed about the Universal title picture after he came back for good reason, because we don't want him to see him get fucking killed by Lesnar or get buried by a woman. So I think he should get a mid-card title to get his momentum back up. The Battle Club's helping a little, but I think this title win will really get his momentum back up. So that's what we did. Finn will retain. Well, you know, Finn will win. Next up, for the wall attack team title, it's kind of a weird match here. It would be Braun Strowman and his still mystery partner taking on the bar. Defend the titles. The ball has been amazing as champions. They lost the titles last year to the club before Mania, because I think the club were the champions going into Mania 33 before that big return with Matt and Jeff Hardy. Will we get another shocking return with Braun's partner? A lot of moves about it, it being Elias and maybe returning some more Joe. But no matter who Elias' partner is, I would predict that Elias and his partner. Whoever, or Elias and Strowman, that Strowman, whoever his partner is, in him will become the new World Tag Team Champions. That's my prediction. Love the ball. They've had a decent win as champion going back and forth, especially the hot potato game with Dean and Seth, and then eventually Seth and Jason Jordan. Who knows what would have happened if Jason Jordan, Jason Jordan stayed healthy? So it probably would have been Jordan and uh, Seth, but Seth's in the IC title match. So, uh, there you go. That's my prediction for that wall. The titles. It's like what happened on Hot. I kind of made this on my wall review on Monday. They did the same thing on Hot. Watch Mania 11. He's got a mystery partner. Didn't reveal it until Mania. It was Yokozuna. And they won the tag titles that night. So they could do that again. At Mania this year. So I'm going to you there. Then. For the wall women's title. It will be. Twisted Bliss. Little Miss Bliss. Alexa Bliss defending her title. Against. Nia Jax, the besties are no longer besties. I think like a team name or something. But they, they had a little breakup tease last fall, but never pulled the trigger on the breakup until now. Until Lex made some comments about Nia. And the match would be okay. You know, it's a Nia Jax match. You know what I mean? Lex is going to do her best to make Nia look good. And same with Nia not trying to legitimately hurt Alexa because she's boxed a few times on people, especially in a match against Charlotte last year on Wall. There was some big matches there. She almost injured Charlotte for real. But she's gotten cleaner and crisper. But we'll see what happens in this match. But I predict that uh, Nia Jax will win. Even with Mickey James' involvement, I will predict that. But Nia Jax winning. Now... The one match that is the predictable match of the entire card. Universal title match. Woman Reigns wins. The man who's faster than a Wayne Mysterio. More powerful than a big show. Even a big career in a single bound. Woman Reigns. I need to elaborate. The building woman of the beach champion. Less is leaving again probably for UFC. But he teased it a couple times. I think he teased it the last time they fought. Now, as much as we're not happy, and I've been very vocal about Wayne's main event mania again, and going against Lesnar, you know, everyone forgot the match they had in Mania 31, despite an okay little build, was a decent match. It wasn't a bit of a match. It was a good, exciting match. And especially when Wallace cashed in on everybody. But without that backup plan, looking at this match, Straight up. And Roman Reigns will win. There's no question about it. We need a full-time champ again. Yes, I'm going to hate the fact that it's going to be Roman, but we need a full-time champ again for the Universal title. We need a champ there a lot. 
Especially now with a pay-per-view a month now. When we go to multi-branded pay-per-views after Mania, you know, all pay-per-views, C-list pay-per-views are now being, they're not B-list, they're C-list pay-per-views, some of them. They will now all be multi-branded, including my interbank. I'm happy about that. So, that's my match predictions. My secondary predictions. Will Carmella cash in my interbank? Yes. She will cash in at Mania. On who, you ask? Well, it's kind of a trick answer here. I'm kind of cheating. But if Asuka wins, Asuka's getting cashed in on by Carmella. But if Asuka loses, but Alexa Bliss retains, then Carmella will cash in on Bliss. So it's kind of a cheating answer, but that's my prediction. So flat out, Carmella will cash in at Mania. We haven't had a cash in at Mania in three years. And Carmella's held onto that case the longest. But that's not saying much. You know, when you hold a briefcase long and not cashing it in, it's kind of stupid. But hey. And of course, the biggest petition of all. Will Cena and Tinker happen? Not just be a stare down. Like a real match. Yes. The bill for this one, as many of us know, it has been a weird one. A weird one at best. With Cena calling out Tank would last for weeks and nothing. We thought Tank would answer on Monday. Nothing. You know, this dude's been teased for a while. Nothing happened in the Wumble. Nothing happened at Fastlane. Nothing happened in the Chamber. Nothing happened in the last four weeks of War. So is this match really going to happen? Or is it going to go to No Show Mania? But for now, Cena's a fan. And if nothing happens, it'll be the first Mania since Mania 32 that Cena did not have a proper match. He appeared at 32, but as part of that overlong rock promo that made Mania 1 till midnight that year. And already she did Mania got worse because it ran long. It didn't help the main event was after that in a boring match between Trip Branch and Roman. Part of the worst Mania main event, main event, event ever. Next to last year's match. Anyway. So. There you go. And I said it the Monday. I hope to God this ain't like. They're building it up. And then they have them stare down and say. Oh it's going to be next year. Better not pull that shit. Say see next year. That better not happen. That better not happen. So. So that's all my predictions. I know it's been a long video. I know I should have. Done both separately, but I want to do them both together. So, predictions for both NXT TakeOver and Mania 34. We'll see if my predictions are white in the reviews when I make them. So, thank you so much for watching. And happy Mania weekend, people. See ya down the road. You've been attacked by the predictions from Zach. See ya. I'll be seeing you a lot next few days with the reviews. So, happy Wednesday day and happy Mania weekend. Let the madness begin.